<laughs> oh man, I am excited for today. We've got some great news, or at least some potentially great news for our injured peacock. About a month ago, we decided to take our lone white peacock to the vet to get him checked for disease because we had five other pea chicks and a mama hen die one by one over the summer. But everything went wrong with the vet checkups. They didn't test for anything other than avian flu. The second blood draw wasn't even used. Then they had us collect poop from the peacock that was misplaced for weeks. Already super weird. And ultimately, the peacock had a broken wing that had to be fixed. So now we've gotten some help finding an avian vet to fix his wing. That's too much. But will this fix it for good? So we're grateful for the internet, the power of the internet, because we had a vet reach out for, to us from California, from the LA area. And he's an avian vet and was advising on some ways to to brace the, the injured arm. And then he ended up finding a bird vet, an avian vet that was about an hour away from us. We happened to call today and they're gonna get our peacock in and they said they might perform surgery today. So we've got to take food and water away from our peacock just to make sure there's nothing in his system. And then here in about an hour, we'll head down to the vet. How exciting. We're keeping the, the peacock here and they're going to do surgery tomorrow at 1 p.m. We asked the, the doctor if we could film any of it and she just wasn't comfortable with being on camera. And I filmed a couple things in the room but basically she said this is worst case scenario for a wing. Whenever the, the bone is exposed, if it was broken inside, that it'd be much more fixable. But with it exposed that you have to amputate at least from anything that's exposed down. And so it's actually showed me a chart. And so it's actually broken a little bit above the elbow. She basically has to go back almost all the way to the joint. So she's gonna try to leave a little bit of, of bone, but she's gonna have to take off all the wing back to that point. She's gonna start treating more for the lice. She was gonna use the, the same stuff that we use, but she was gonna treat, I believe, orally for the lice. She really wasn't keen on doing the surgery. She said this is usually doesn't go well. She's done two of these specific types of surgeries where she's removed a wing like this before. And there's a lot of issues because one, you've gotta use anesthesia, so you've gotta put them under. Uh, they're gonna lose a decent amount of blood and so blood donor is possibly up for discussion and we do have our other peacock, Blue. And so she's gonna let me know tonight if she, if he's anemic, or this peacock, if this peacock is anemic that they're gonna need more blood and we may have to bring in Blue to do a transfusion. And so she would have preferred us not do this and just put the, either let the peacock live out its life, which would not have lived very long with a, a bone exposed, or just lay him to rest and, and take him out. We really wanted to try, even though this is going to cost quite a bit, the surgery is going to cost a lot. I don't know if I'll tell you guys or not, but it's going to cost a lot more than just buying another peacock or a pair or whatever, but we definitely would like to see him survive because of how, just to us, he, he means a lot for how much he's already been through and then to survive we'd really love to to have him in our aviary even if it is with just one wing and so we really appreciate everyone that's pointed us in this direction and to take action quickly because too much longer and he may not have he may not have survived i hope it works me too ben so we've got the bees out a little bit today it's about 54 degrees but in three hours it's going to be 37 and so we've been wanting to get something keep these bees warm and try to give them the best shot to get through the winter. We've lost three hives so far, two of them to wax moths. One was just frozen in place. It's possible maybe they're they're just already down for the winter and they're gonna they're gonna come back to life in the, the spring, but I'm not positive on that. But we've got a bunch of other hives that are doing really well. So we've got this bee cozy system where it's an insulated box that goes on top of an existing Langstroth hive and then we have this wrap that goes all the way down. Let me show you how it works and how we're gonna get our bees warm for winter. And so we've got to put a little nail or screw in the bottom to just give a little space to allow the bees to come in and out to allow some airflow. This green hive is looking about as good as any hive I've ever had going into the winter. They've got a ton of honey. 16 frames in there. They probably have 12 to 13 that are look like they're full of honey and they've got bees active in both boxes. Then we just pull the, the bee cozy insulation right over the beehive. We put the, the top box of insulation over that 
and then we put the lid back on and then the bees are all ready for winter. Here at the Flow Hive, we've got the wrap on, we've got the hive reducer. So we just have a little space to go in and out, so hopefully not a lot of airflow there. So hopefully that keeps all of our Langstroth hives and our Flow Hives alive this winter. So I'm pretty nervous. Surgery started about three hours ago. And I haven't heard back yet. Let me tell you about the situation and talking to the doctor last evening. This was kind of interesting. Last night, the vet called me. Somebody at the vet clinic has actually watched our channel and has seen the story on the peacock and let her know. And so she was able to watch the video. And so she had some concerns between one seeing content on there is you know, is it gonna be something where I'm featuring this and am I gonna show them in a bad light? And that's not my goal at all. I, I would never intend to show the previous vet clinic or show her in any kind of bad light. I just wanna tell our story. She saw the peacock injury on the wing and before I even took him to the vet initially, she saw the wing hanging down low. And so she thought it's possible there was already a break that occurred. And then sometime between then and then when we went to the vet, the bone actually then came out of the skin. And so it's possible that break happened three, four weeks ago, and then sometime after they did the blood draw on each wing, then the bone came out and was exposed, and then that's where big problems start to happen. That's where infections start to take place, and the bird wouldn't last very long after that happened. So one, she was already kind of behind because this injury is already gonna start to heal up, and so it's gonna be hard to, to cut it away from what I understand. She checked the, the peacock's blood level for an anemia. Where That's where it wouldn't have enough blood in its system. And she said the blood level looked good because ultimately if we needed some blood, we were gonna need a donor. And so we had talked about bringing Blue, our other peacock in to donate blood, but she said that wasn't gonna be necessary. So good news there. Jimmy? From this moment where I just went inside to update you on the news and then walk over to the greenhouse where the family was at. Guess what? I got a call from the doctor. And here it is. Here's our phone call. This is Jake. How'd it go? She didn't initially tell me if the peacock survived or died. She told me this was a yeah. real struggle. This was her most difficult one she's done yet, yeah. as far as a wing removal. She said it definitely okay. was confirmed that it had been about three to four weeks since the initial break. She had a really hard time sawing through the bone, but it was able to uh -huh. get it back to a, a good oh, wow. point and put some bandage over it. And then she told me okay. he was starting to wake up. Yeah, That's right the peacock had survived. You're not cold? No. You're warm? Yep. Yeah. Right. Guess what? What? Peacock survived. Yay! <laughs> oh, amazing news. I'm so excited to hear that. It is just freezing out here. So, she said we're not out of the woods yet. Peacock can still pass away at any point from lack of blood, something else goes wrong. So we're hoping that he makes it till tomorrow. She said he hadn't stood up yet, but that he was awake and he breathed like a champ all throughout the, the surgery, even being under with the anesthesia. And so they're gonna, I'm gonna talk to him tomorrow around noon. We'll find out if I can go and pick him up. Can't wait to see him. working on lead training Poppy a little bit. And so we're putting her on a, a lead rope while we're doing the milking. We'll usually walk her around this stall for a few minutes after that. And then we let her back out with her mom.
Unfortunately, we got a call first thing the next morning, and the doctor, she didn't even have to say it. I could tell by the tone of her voice that the, the peacock had died overnight. So we made the drive back to the clinic, picked up the peacock, and she told us about everything that might have gone wrong. Well, I'll tell you, I, I just, it just broke my heart. You know, we didn't really have much of a choice. It's like, he couldn't live with this wing like that. We had to try. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it had to be painful. It was just gonna get worse instead of better. You know, I wish that if he was going to have passed that he would have done it shortly after we put him under anesthesia so he wouldn't have to wake up and, and all that. At least I had him on a huge dose of pain medication because I didn't want him to to be uncomfortable. We gave it to him as soon as we put him under. So when he woke up, he mm -hmm. you know, had all of that on board. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hind hindsight, you know, I could say, well, maybe we should have put this off for two weeks. Maybe we should have hit him with all the meds, you know, for infection, medicated him for the lice and the worms, tried to build him up, fatten him up, um, mm -hmm. something like that, you know, to see. I don't know if it would have made a difference. But the, you know, the infection and, and tissue in the wing was just going to get worse and worse. Yeah. So you're kind of in a, an almost no-win situation. So we have the peacock here. I felt awful for the doctor. She was, she was heartbroken over it. She did an amazing job. And, she really put her heart into it to try to help our peacock to save his life. She didn't think he had too much longer to live, so she really wanted to do the surgery, but she was just second guessing, and I, I think she did the best she could with, with what we had to deal with. And, and we just happened to get a call today from the original vet clinic, and they had actually, they'd found the fecal sample that we had given them. They sent it off to Kansas State and they got the results back. And they told us that they found three different types of worms in his system. Two of them were fatal to birds and the third one was, was not great either. And so <laughs> most likely is what killed the Pechix if that was in all of their system. Easily be treated when they're young and so in the future we could have them tested pretty early on with their, their fecal matter and, and get them treated and hopefully say future generations of white peacocks. We're gonna bury our peacock out here in the aviary because that's where we always wanted to, him to be, to live his life out, but wanted to check him and just see the work that she had done to remove the wing. She did an amazing job. This is the what's left of the, the wing, the bone right here. And so on one side where you've got a full wing, this is all we have left on this side. So she did a really great job though. We decided to name the peacock Winger. When we took him into surgery, we didn't have a name for him yet. We thought that was appropriate, a tribute to his broken wing. We know we've learned a lot about parasites and different situations with the peacock, so that's really opened us, opened our eyes up to different situations. So we're so thankful to our vet for giving it a shot. She knew she was in a tough situation as it is coming into it with a peacock that was a little underweight, mostly because of the internal parasites and then with the, the blood loss during the surgery and then the coming out of the anesthesia, he had a lot to overcome and we were so hopeful that he was gonna make it. He woke up and he seemed to be doing fine and then didn't make it through the night. So we'll remember Winger's story for a long time. So we're gonna bury him here in the aviary, make a little memorial plaque to him. We'll always think of him when we're walking around the aviary. I'll miss you, Winger. I'll miss Winger. Bye, Winger. Bye, buddy. Sorry this didn't work out better for you.